the term in a manly way today. Uh, we're going to be talking about something a guy can really wrap his hands around. And no, it will not be this rather rare and legendary 55 KH case in front of you. We're going to be talking about Dick. And no, not that one. We're going to be talking about the other two kinds. And what other two kinds are there, pray tell, you may be asking yourself. You got your spotted dick and your king dick. And I know what y'all are thinking. Y'all are thinking, I don't want no spotted dick, but ah, king dick, that sounds pretty fucking good. So here we are, standing at the confluence of Coincident Creek and the River of Randomness. And you're asking yourself, how in the fuck did we end up here? Well, here's how. Many moons ago, uh, my wife went shopping, as she's prone to do, because I want to get fed. <laughs> and she happened upon this little gem in a grocery store. Uh, spotted dick. Sponge pudding. Mmm, that sounds fucking good, don't it? Jeez Louise, I can't imagine anything worse to name a product than that. Who in the hell is going to buy it, let alone eat that shit? Uh, you can hear something in there. I don't know what it is. But anyway, she bought it. I said, I ain't that shit. And uh, it's been sitting on the shelf for the longest time. Well then, I don't know, a couple, three, four, five months ago, and this, this video has taken 10 years. This is probably 10 years old, this can of spotted dick. Way past its expiration date and prime, I am sure. Although, since it is microwavable, hey, who knows, probably kill anything in there. But anyway, uh, uh, that's been sitting on the shelf for many years. And then, I needed a socket. Well, one day I was working on something, and I don't remember what, but I needed a socket. And it turns out it was neither SAE nor was it metric. It was some weird in-between thing, and I don't remember what the fuck it was I was working on. But anyway, I started digging around in my socket drawer. I have some English sockets back from when I used to work in the Triumph BSA shop, and uh, I stumbled across this guy right here, a King Dick 1116th BSF and 5HW, Whitworth that is, and this thing fit right on there. And I thought, what the fuck is this? British made. I don't know if you could read that or not. A little hard to pick it out of the chrome and reflections. But, you know, I got to thinking, you got your king dick, and you got your companion piece, spotted dick, and I'm thinking, Jesus Christ, that's kind of funny. And, of course, these are both English. And then I got to thinking uh, about the uh, uh, Jerry Jeff Walker song, London Homesick Blues. And there's a line there uh, that says, the English sense of humor is drier than the Texas sand. And I thought, well, no, this is goddamn funny. A spotted dick, king dick. Your English have a fascination for naming things dick, apparently. That's pretty funny. Well, as it turns out, uh, uh, Jerry Jeff Walker died recently. Uh, last year recently, anyway, not that recently. And uh, I got to thinking about the song. I got to thinking about these things. And all these things just came together. Boom, here they are. Um, so anyway, uh, proof, the English sense of humor is not drier than the Texas sand. And as it happens to turn out, uh, George F. Fokker did not write London Homesick Blues. Uh, that was written by a guy named Gary P. Nunn, who uh, was in Jerry Just Band. But uh, uh, kind of interesting, one of the songs that made Jerry Jeff most famous wasn't even written by Jerry Jeff. But, you know, here's just a little homage to uh, Jerry Jeff Walker, uh, Gary P. Nunn, the English sense of humor, good old spotted dick, 
the good old King Dick. Uh, here we are. And I know what some of you are thinking. Some of you are thinking that we need to open this can of Spotted Dick to see what the hell is in there. And, uh, well, let's open it up and see what we got. We're going to use the crushing with the vice process and see how it goes. When you're down on your luck and you ain't got a buck in London, you're a goner. Even London Bridge has fallen down and moved to Arizona. Now I know why. And I'll substantiate the rumor that the English sense of humor is drier than the Texas sand. You can put up your dukes or you can bet your boots that I'm leaving just as fast as I can. I want to go home with the armadillo. Good country music from Amarillo and Abilene. The friendliest people and the prettiest women you ever seen. Well, it's cold over here, and I swear I wish they'd turn the heat on. Mm -hmm. And where in the world is that English girl I promised I would meet on the third floor? Mm -hmm. And of the whole damn lot, the only friend I got is a smoke and a cheap guitar. My mind keeps roaming, my heart keeps longing to be home in a Texas bar. I wanna go home with the armadillo. Good country music from Amarillo and Abilene. The friendliest people and the prettiest women you've ever seen. Well, I decided that I'd get my cowboy hat and go down to Marble Arch Station. Cause when a Texan fancies he'll take his chances, chances will be taken, that's for sure. And them limey eyes, they were eyeing the prize that some people call manly footwear. They said you're from down south, and when you open your mouth, you always seem to put your foot there. I want to go home with the armadillo. Good country music from Amarillo and Abilene. The friendliest people and the prettiest women you've ever seen. I want to go home with the armadillo. Good country music from Amarillo and Abilene. The friendliest people and the prettiest women you've ever seen. I want to go home with the armadillo. Good country music from Amarillo and Abilene. The friendliest people and the prettiest women you've ever seen.